So, yes, wonderful <laughs> memories, Claire, of the Olympics. Oh, I think they just make us all happy. We remember yes. those moments. Yeah. Yeah. And you go, that, that makes, it just makes us proud. And I think that uplift in your soul is quite important. I tell you, I do like it because it's a bit like this, the velodrome. Yeah, it is like this, actually. We could have a Kieran What's race that right weird here. One? Where they go really slow and they just sort of cycle. <laughs> and then the other one's looking at them like, what do you want? It's like, I want to beat you. But when are you going to beat me? Not yet, I'm biding my time. <laughs> and they go really, really slowly for like ages. And, and then suddenly, suddenly goes, you know what? Something <laughs> might happen, really. Well, I'm right behind you. Something could happen, really. And they go, get out! It's happening now! It's happening now! And then it's over. Could anyway. we just shout different Olympic sports at you and see if we could do a kind of charades, Michael does? We can try another one. What have you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> Javelin. Well, yes. There's a lot of, yes. there's a lot of limbering. I'm, I'm better at the limbering than the actual sport. <laughs> I'm, I'm good at all yep, this. That's it. All this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like the weightlifting, I, I could do all this. All this stuff. They <laughs> 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 <It> really... <laughs> And you worry when it goes up that their head will vibrate off their body because they and get halfway. That's pretty much it. This is Who funny. needs the Olympics? Wow. This is the Olympics. <laughs> I'm not as fit as I'd hoped. <laughs> I tried to get fit. I've been trying to get fit. I'd like, you know, the, the, the Olympics. Have you ever seen people as fit as the Olympics? People are in amazing physical condition. And they train every day and night for this little moment of glory. And then they win a medal and flowers, which they don't want. You can sense they don't want the flowers. <laughs> the men, men never want flowers. <laughs> well, I bought all one. No, I bought all one. Flowers. <laughs> and women can't receive flowers without wanting desperately to put them in water and cut them. You can see it on their faces. They've trained day and night for four years. And the national anthem's going on, they're going, I need this, hurry up, hurry up, they're dying! <laughs> I like the gymnastics, you know, when they kids on the mat, that's my favorite bit, when they have the big mat, and they do everything in the corners. It's all got to be in the corner. You get to the corner, and then they do this amazing, you know, gymnastics. I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. There was a moment, there was a moment there when you thought, really? No. <laughs> So they're going, because I think diagonal has the longest space and they can only really operate in diagonals. They're like bishops in chess, it's all they can do. <laughs> but sometimes they find themselves not in the corner. And you can see them panic, they have to, I have to get to the corner. <laughs> My career operates in the corner, but they can't just walk to the corner because I think they feel that it's not very athletic to just go, yeah, bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I can do it. So they sort of dance their way. They feel it's better to do some moves. So they sort of move. <laughs> and then when they get near enough, they finish it in one step! I'm there! Okay. I can be fabulous now. A little bit of gymnastics. <laughs> we all got so patriotic. It became almost fever pitch, didn't it? I think we lost, sort of lost control. I mean, the day after the Olympics ended, we should have invaded another country. That was our time to retake the British Empire. It was quite depressing, wasn't it, when it ended, but the flame went out at the end, the final flame, and that's it, it's gone, no more Olympics. <laughs> and Brazil took over. Brazil, like, we're having that, thank you, we'll have the Brazil Olympics. Then they, they, they did the little show, didn't they? Brazil. That was shit. Yes! It was! Street Sweeper and Pele, pathetic. <laughs> the only Olympics. Our pride got so out of control. I think it was summed up in this lovely moment where Jessica Ellis was doing the, the long jump. And she was there, you know, before she goes, and she, she does that clapping thing when she wants everybody, the whole stadium, come on. Says, no, don't you do it. I'm not going to hide you. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the Olympics now. And the whole crowd was like, yes, go on, Jessica, go on, Jessica. Everyone was in time. People at home were probably going, go on, Jess. You can do this. Team GB, go on, Jessica. Team GB. She was like, I'm going to do it soon. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it yet. So I'm going to do it in a minute. I'm going to go. I've been training four years. But is it now? No, it's not now. It could be now. Is it now? Go on, go on, Jessica. And she ran and she flew. Probably jumped further than she's ever jumped before because of the weight of the expectation and the excitement and the euphoria of the nation. Then her major rival steps up next. I'm a woman from Liechtenstein who, for some reason, decided to do the same thing to the <laughs> British <laughs> Olympic Stadium. And everyone just went, no. Team GB. It's an extraordinary time. 
And I got into all the sports. I got into sports that, let's be honest, aren't really spectator sports. I will never watch them again. But I was obsessive over them because we were winning gold medals. <laughs> all the horse ones were quite shit, if I'm honest. <laughs> but the equestrian centre was just around the corner here. They were so posh. It was strange seeing sort of middle-aged, upper-class men winning gold medals because they were so uber sort of posh. They, they had those, those lips, you know, that sort of move independently of what they're saying. They'll be saying one thing, but their lips will be doing completely the opposite. <laughs> Thousands of years of inbreeding, and basically the lips have a life of their own at this point. Before I even wake up, the lips are moving. Morning! <laughs> Sometimes I finish a sentence and the lips carry on without me. I don't know how they scored it. Did you get more points the more you look like the horse? Is that how they actually <laughs> competed in the question? Somebody give me a carrot! <laughs> and the taekwondo, did you see that? Unbelievable, that's not really a sport. You, are we only allowed to use one leg during it? Fuck off. <laughs> right, you fuck off. <laughs> this is my gold medal! Even Andy Murray won. That's when I knew something was up. When Andy Murray... When Andy Murray caught the Team GB bug, he hasn't even lost since. He's incredible. I actually met Andy Murray once. I met him in a restaurant. I don't know him. He was eating. I was eating. I saw him. He was quite inconspicuous because he was in his home clothes. We've never seen him in his home clothes. He had like a polo neck. He was eating a plate full of normal food. It's not like he was sitting in his, you know, in his kit. <laughs> a towel over his head, having a banana. <laughs> I think that's Andy Murray on table four. <laughs> Asking for the napkin and just throwing it back. Selecting potatoes. <laughs> These two are fine. That one can piss off. <laughs> I'm sure it's Andy Murray. So I went over to his table. He was sitting there with his girlfriend. You've probably seen her. Very pretty girl. She was sitting there. He was sitting there. There was two other people sitting there. And I just went opposite him. I don't know him. I just thought, you know, I'd say hello. I should have said, excuse me, sorry to bother you. These are the classic ways to interrupt people you don't know. But I sort of panicked. I just identified him. I just went, Andy Murray. <laughs> He stopped eating and went, Michael McIntyre. <laughs> he said, I love you, Andy Murray. He said, I love you, Michael McIntyre. He said, I came to see you at Wimbledon. He's like, I've got your DVD. So I think I'm my favourite tennis player. He said, you're my favourite comedian. Anyway, we kept exchanging all these compliments. And I looked over at his girlfriend and she was doing this. <laughs> tennis is fun. And the umpire. Seriously, what kind of a job is tennis umpiring? <laughs> Any baby could do that. They just sit in a high chair saying juice. That's my favourite joke. I hope you enjoyed it. 